All right. Well, welcome to uh, your new Blackboard, your new semester Blackboard checklist. Um, the first of our academic technology webinars, and uh, certainly going to be the uh, most poorly attended, as there are zero faculty attendees. But we'll record this thing for posterity. Uh, all right. So the purpose of this. Uh, particular webinar is that you're uh, you're poised to start a new semester Blackboard course, and well, you just want to make sure that everything's good to go before you actually have your students go in and start doing things. Okay? Um, there is a nice little list of things that I consider uh, most important to be sure of before you actually tell your students to, to get going. Now, by the time the first day of the semester begins, there's a good chance your students have been trying for weeks to actually access your Blackboard course. Um, but naturally, it's unavailable to them until you actually throw the switch. So you have plenty of time to go through this checklist ahead of time. Uh, the first off, to worry about, well, here's the list of what we're going to be going through. And uh, some of these items we won't spend very much time on, others significantly more. So let's start off with this first one that I've labeled semester and section. And what the heck am I talking about with that? Well, as you're, I'm sure, well aware, uh, the um, Blackboard system that we run here at Palomar keeps uh, three previous terms, whatever the current term is, and whatever new terms are coming up uh, on the uh, life cycle of a course. So uh, for example, right now we're at the start of the spring 2012 semester, and that means that there, the oldest courses on the system are those from spring 2011, uh, so a full year ago. And those won't disappear until the end of this semester, at which time the spring 2011 stuff will fall off. And and uh, spring 2012 will just be one of the older ones because the term will be over. Um, so what to be aware of with that? Well, what that really means is when you bring up your My Courses module, you're going to see a whole lot of entries that probably are from past semesters. semesters. Now, the My Courses module that's on that My Palomar tab, it's alphabetized by year and term, well, by the entries themselves, which means that your fall courses are always going to sort higher than spring for any given year. And then uh, your 2011, of course, is going to come before 2012, et cetera, as we go on into the future. Um, and then, of course, the list would be synced up by which type of class, uh, both by department and if you teach multiple departments, uh, they'll sort alphabetically that way and by exact class number. Um, now, what that really means is you're going to see all of the previous year's courses on that My Courses module. And so you need to make sure that you don't click into a wrong semester. And of course, you need to make sure you don't click into the wrong class. Um, we've had cases of instructors getting all their material prepared only to find out that they'd put it into the wrong class. They meant it in their, uh, you know, say, Psych 200 class when they really needed it in their Psych 100 class, something like that. Because, of course, when you're starting out in Blackboard, these are just empty shells and you've put your material in. So. Uh, one of the things you can do to mitigate that is once you have copied your material from a previous semester class into a new semester class, uh, you can then go in and click the little gear icon in the upper right corner of the My Courses module, and then you can edit your course list. Uh, this is something that's been around in Blackboard for a while, but some people don't know about it. You can actually turn off selectively by unchecking these boxes, uh, the different courses, and then you can hit Submit, and it will actually trim down the list of courses so you won't find yourself accidentally going into the wrong one. Okay, uh, For getting them mixed up between which courses you're teaching on a given semester, well, there's not much help for you there. Uh, you're just going to have to watch the course names and make sure that you get everything right. <laughs> All right, now that we're sure that we're talking about the right semester, uh, the next issue is the dates of the material that you've put into your course. Now, I'm assuming that you've either gotten this material uh, from a publisher or, far more likely, you've actually copied it forward from a previous semester. So here's what to look for. 
Um, the three main areas where you're likely to run into date related problems are the announcements, the grade center, and availability of different content in your course. Okay. As to the announcements, they, every announcement that you put in has a posted on date. And that's going to be the actual date that you post the announcement. That's the way the tool is built. So what this means is if you're one of those folks that likes to copy your announcements from previous semesters, it's going to have a previous semester date on it. Now, I've mentioned this to faculty and they say, oh, the students don't read those. Believe me, they do. We sometimes get support calls wanting to know why there's old dates on the material and is the student actually in the right place. So uh, this is one thing you just should be aware of if you want to copy your announcements from old courses. Of course, if you're posting all of your announcements new, that's not going to be a problem. It'll actually show the posting date. All right. So that's the announcements, but what am I talking about with the Grade Center? Well, specifically the due dates in the Grade Center. Uh, when you go into the Grade Center, and if you go under the Manage menu to Column Organization, you'll see a listing of uh, all of the uh, different due dates that might be set on columns. Now, in this case, most of them in this particular Grade Center are set to none, but one I have here, I did set a due date on of September 2nd, and well, that's not so good because um, I'm going to have to go through, and for everything that has a due date set, I'm going to need to uh, change that due date. Now, the way I would do that is to go back to the grade grid of the Grade Center and click the double chevron button for that column header and go down to Edit Column Information, and then change the due date information to be whatever new due date I want. Um, the reason that you would set a due date in the first place would be to make this entry show up in the um, to-do module on the home page. Um, then one of the problems with that is you do have to keep updating them as new semesters happen. You have to go back in and update all of those due dates. Okay. So that's the Grade Center side of things. And then with the availability settings, I, I wish there was some secret I could tell you uh, to go through and, and automatically change all of your availability date controls, but there really isn't. You're just going to have to look at each piece of content that you have set availability controls on and you know update those dates manually. So go through all your content areas, check your links to tests, make sure they're all correct. There's no one centralized place to look. You actually have to go examine the stuff in your content areas. So. That's all of the date stuff. That's probably the biggest thing, and that's just Blackboard settings. So if you've included textual information that mentions dates, like in your syllabus, or if you have a, a listed calendar, you need to go in and change that content as well to have the updated information. OK. So now there's the section I label Cleanup. Uh, what I'm talking about there is discussion board posts, if you copied things from a past semester, and blog posts, and wiki entries, uh, anywhere that you might have had students contributing to the course. If you copied this from a previous semester, you're going to need to go into these discussion board forums, blogs, and wikis, and actually clear out the old students' contributions. That doesn't happen automatically. Uh, the most common thing is when instructors copy their discussion board forums, and then the forums are populated with you know, student information. So you're going to need to clear that out so it's ready for this semester. And then if you're the type that you have uh, been mentioning your students by name in the announcements or in content items, you should probably go through and remove the names of the old students so that it's not showing up anymore. Uh, this can be particularly effective if you've been posting announcements like, oh, Billy did really well on that paper. Well, next semester's class won't know who Billy is. So you'll want to purge that information from your course. Um, OK. That's all getting your material ready and making sure that it's all set up. Now, there's a couple of things to, well, one thing in particular to double check 
regarding your contact information. If you go to the My Palomar tab, where you get when you first log into Blackboard, and click on the My Information link that's in the Tools box in the upper left corner of the screen, uh, you're going to get a list. The first one is Edit Personal Information. So you'll want to click that. And then that's going to bring up a screen that will show you uh, some basic information like what your name is, but most particularly what your email address is set to. Now, this is important because it's probably set to whatever email address you want to use. However, in some isolated cases, uh, the Palomar system has replaced what the instructor thinks their email address is with something different. So at least once a semester, I recommend going into the uh, My Information, edit your personal information, and check to make sure that that email address is set to exactly what you think it should be. Um, for students, they can do this as well. And then if their email address isn't set correctly, they can go into the eServices system and change their email address. They can also change their password there as well. But chances are they did that before they even got into the system. Um, the thing is, faculty can change their passwords in eServices, uh, at least to get in with their student accounts. Um, but to get your email address changed in Blackboard as an instructor, you actually have to contact the Human Resources Department. It's a little unclear why, as employees, we have to jump through much more difficult hoops than the normal students would. But for a faculty member to get their email address that's listed in Blackboard updated, you're going to have to get in touch with the Human Resources Department. Sorry, but that's just the shakes. Okay. So once you've confirmed your contact information, it's time to throw the switch. Course availability, as you may very well know, is on your control panel in the customization area. The properties zone will take you to a screen. Uh, in section two, you have course availability that you're setting. Just choose yes and hit submit. And then your course is available. Now, courses are made unavailable by default, which means that until and unless the instructor makes their course available, students will be unable to access the course site. We say that to students a lot at the start of every semester. Um, a lot of them just assume that the course is going to become available automatically. And they also assume that every faculty member uses Blackboard, which obviously is not the case. Um, so you will want to make sure, at the very least, that before you tell your students to go into the Blackboard course that you've made it available. Uh, but once you flip that switch to yes and submit it, well, your course is available and the students will be able to get in again. So technically, at this point, you're done. But I still have one entry left on the checklist, and that's student access. Uh, what I mean by this is accessing your own course as a student what? How, can, how do you do that? Well, uh, if you log in using the same information that you use when you log into eServices, that's your nine-digit number as username, and then whatever your eServices password is, uh, you're going to see a list of all of your own courses for this semester, and you're going to have access to them as a student. That's why your name shows up on the course roster and in the Grade Center, uh, because you have a second account. You log in with your first initial last name, most people anyway have that, uh, to access the system as an instructor. But if you log in with your numbered account, you're going to be accessing things as a student. And this is a true student's eye point of view. So all of the benefits of being a student, so you'll have that My Grades list, you'll have um, all of the things that a student can see, all those screens that the instructor doesn't quite see right. There's not all that many of them, but there are a few. And then also, you're going to have all the limitations of a student. So if you haven't made your course available and you log in with your numbered account, you'll notice that right away because you won't be able to get any further because you'll have just text instead of a link into the course. So anyway, that's your last step. Go in as a student, take a look at things, and make sure from a student's perspective that you can actually see everything and that things work the way you expect them to. Okay. 
Well, that's the checklist in a nutshell. Uh, if we had any attendees for this live session, I'd be asking for questions now. But of course, <laughs> that's not happening on this one. Uh, there's always a problem with launching a, a new technology on the first day of the semester. And I guess this is one of them. Um, so if after reviewing all this information in the recording, you still do have some questions, or if you run into problems, well, you can always access the Academic Technology website at www.palomar.edu slash ATRC for Academic Technology Resources Center. And then right in the prominent place in, at the top of that page, there's going to be the button to create a help ticket. And that will take you to our help desk software where you can submit your questions. Um, and uh, if you're running into any problems or getting error messages, be sure to include any exact error text that you get, that sort of thing. Uh, but you can get all that at our website. Uh, chances are you know about it already because that's where you went to find the recording, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's been your new semester Blackboard checklist in review. So thanks for watching. <laughs>